Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to International Compost Awareness Week 2024, the IFSCC's Lunch and Le Legislative Lunch and Learn. My name is Jenny Futterman, and I volunteer um, with Go Green Highland Park and with the Internet, uh, with the Illinois Food Scrap and Composting Coalition. And I've been on the ICAW team for a few years now, so I'm really happy to be here. This year's theme is Compost, Nature's Climate Champion. And I think everyone here can agree um, that's true. This year's theme supports the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal, take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts. There are a few ways here that it shows um, how a compost is helping to fight climate change. Um, I'll touch on them just quickly. Uh, it's decreasing methane. Um, that's a potent greenhouse gas that's released when food scraps especially are decomposing in landfills. And um, recently we did find out that food scraps decomposing in landfills are releasing even more methane in the first 20 years of life than thought. So super important to get these laws passed, um, helping to uh, mitigate climate change. Uh, you may have heard about uh, compost uh, increasing soil as a carbon bank. So that's a way that we can store carbon in the ground instead of in the atmosphere. And we are reducing fertilizer inputs using compost, which is reducing pollution that is being created making the fertilizer. And, you know, we can reduce some of the downstream effects of synthetic fertilizer. So compost is a, a great way to, to help do that. And we are increasing resilience in the soil. We are uh, kind of slowing down the effects of climate change and uh, we're bouncing back faster from things like drought and extreme weather, thanks to adding compost to our soil. Uh, next slide, please. Here is our calendar. Um, we have got so many things happening this year. Um, I should have mentioned earlier, Illinois was the kickoff site for the entire uh, International Compost Awareness Week. So we're really proud and excited about that. We had a million, not a million, but a ton of great adventures on Sunday, May 5th. And um, we're having today's legislative lunch and learn. Tomorrow we have a wonderful compost cafe, an evening full of music and stories, which you'll hear about in uh, just a few minutes. And on Saturday, we have even more adventures in composting, um, which you won't want oh. to miss. They're all over the state. Um, I believe we're in five counties. Um, someone will correct me if I'm wrong, but um, it's a treat. We have, it's amazing. Um, you know, we're growing every year, so we hope you can make it on Saturday. And um, I would like to introduce, uh, we've got a short video on our next slide that is from uh, Benjamin Crumstock, the executive director of the Illinois Food Scrap and Composting Coalition. And um, just take a few a uh, minute or two to watch that. Thank you. Hello, my name is Benjamin Crumstock, and I'm the executive director of the Illinois Food Scrap and Composting Coalition. It's my privilege to welcome you to this International Compost Awareness Week program on behalf of IFSCC's chairman, John Lardner, and our entire IFSCC board of directors. Merlan Rampal led a fantastic team of volunteers who organized a robust and exciting week of programming, the fourth annual ICOP prepared and coordinated by IFSCC. If you are unfamiliar with the IFSCC, please check out our website at IllinoisCompost.org. Our mission is comprehensive, addressing all circularity touch points, including organics diversion from landfills, transportation of those materials, responsible processing of the organics, and ultimately getting the manufactured composts into Illinois soils. Whether your principal area of concern or interest is the environment, your personal address, or the health and welfare of your community, the IFSCC is the organization for you. Please consider taking advantage of the ICAW 50% discount that we are offering to new members who join during the month of May. Thank you for joining us in celebrating ICAW 2024 with the nationally designated theme, Compost, Nature's Climate Champion. Super, thank you. 
Um, so yes, as Benjamin mentioned in that video, IFSCC is growing. New members will receive that special rate throughout May to help contribute to the success of our organization. Benefits will include engaging with a network of experts and key stakeholders in organics, recycling, composting, and food scrap diversion from landfills and keeping up on the latest advancements in compost and organics recycling related policy. Membership levels range from individual to platinum and support IFSCC staff, committee, committee activities, and annual membership events and more. This offer will expire on May 31st, so you should act today. Uh, you can find it at illinoiscompost.org backslash membership. So um, please do join us, uh, the IFSCC. It's a great organization. I love the emails. I love it all. Um, our next slide is kind of exciting. Um, we do have a raffle today, and I would like to quickly enter, well, I shouldn't say quickly because Merlan is a wonder. <laughs> Um, Merlan uh, Rampal from the SWELCO, the Solid Waste Agency of Lake County, is going to be doing a quick raffle for us. Um, Merlan has been a longtime champion of the planet and an advocate for the advancement and promotion of composting, along with her father, a biologist and conservationist who loved all things nature and the outdoors. She started gardening and composting at a very young age on Higri Chegg Bark Lake, a small farm they shared with the family and a number of wonderful animals. They grew vegetables, herbs, flowers, uh, trees, and fruit orchards. Merlan now works as Program Outreach and Education Director for SWELCO and collaborates and works with municipalities, community groups, and a variety of organizations on many environmental initiatives and waste diversion efforts, including food waste and related issues. In addition to other programs and activities she coordinates for the agency, she has worked on a two-year compost grant with the USDA and hosts annual compost and rain barrel sales. She gives numerous demos and presentations on waste prevention, healthy homes, yards, gardening, and compost. Merlin is pretty much all around town, and I tell you what, she helped me get some composting started at my school and multiple schools, and I just, I can't see enough so I'd like to pass it on to Marlan. Um, go ahead with our raffle winner, please. Oh, thank you so much, Jenny. I'm just going to take a couple quick minutes so we can get on to this wonderful presentation that Liz, Liz, and, uh, and Kiara have put together for us today. Um, and just as Jenny showed the slide earlier with our calendar, we have had a great kickoff on Sunday with a lot of events. Um, we have things spread throughout this week. Um, today, I think there's a compost giveaway. We have several medical centers, libraries, schools that are offering different activities throughout the week. And then we have a ton of great things happening uh, this weekend as well with our adventures in composting. So please go take a look at the IFSCC website, five or six counties across Illinois. Things are happening all over throughout the rest of the week um, and this weekend. We also have our compost cafe tomorrow night. So if you haven't registered for that, you can either come to one of our live audiences. We'll be performing live from Vernon Hills Park District in Vernon Hills, Illinois, Sullivan Center. Or you can go to the Des Plaines Public Library or the Zion Benton Public Library and watch live, or you can register and watch virtually. Um, but I wanna move on quickly and um, so we can get started with this great program today. Uh, thank you all for coming out. And um, and very quickly, we have uh, graciously donated by Biobag uh, an Umi Max bundle. You can see the picture there. And the winner for this program today of that lovely bundle is Lawrence Salas. So Lawrence, I don't know if you're here today, but that will be sent. Biobag will be sending you that lovely package. So thank you to Biobag for for the donation and let's get on to this great program. <laughs> Thank you. Super, thanks Merlan. Um, I am pleased to introduce Liz Kunkel as our first speaker. Again, another person I'm very happy to know in the compost land for a few years. Liz Kunkel is the Zero Waste Policy Manager at the Illinois Environmental Council. She oversees advocacy, coalition building, relationships, and organizing related to zero waste issues throughout the state. 
Prior to joining IEC and while practicing trademark law for 20 plus years, Liz established green teams at local schools, founded Go Green Winnetka, a nonprofit citizens environmental group, and was appointed to her community's environmental and forestry commission. Since stepping away from the practice of law in 2019, Liz worked for Collective Resource Compost, a woman-owned food scrap hauling company, and has become an active member of the Illinois Food Scrap and Composting Coalition and the U.S. Composting Council. Take it away, Liz. Thanks so much, Jenny. And thank you also, uh, Merlan and Benjamin, for that great introduction overall to IFSCC. Um, before I talk about IEC for a minute, one more minute of context. Um, as Jenny said, we've known each other for a number of years. Um, I'm also the founder of Go Green Winnetka, and I've done a lot of work to uh, just expand composting, educate around it again in our schools, like whether it's grassroots or through my environmental commission um, or at the state level with policy, I just, I, I, I do compost all the time. I just can't get enough of it. Um, and really quickly, I just wanted to say, we're also really excited about the format of this um, IFSCC ICA week of programming that we've really settled into um, and is really, as you can see, getting, it's gaining a lot of traction and it's evolved over the last couple of years, last few years with all of us, um, you know, all of the ICC folks, IFSCC, sorry, folks on this call um, to work out this great combination of events that are, again, these bookend events of, of hands-on, in-person, in-person interactive events on the first and last day of this uh, International Week celebrating compost. And then we do these virtual events in the middle, you know, to attract different audience, to um, allow for different scheduling, you know, different, um, just different access, different um, opportunities to interact with compost. And then very specifically, we've settled on doing this lunch and learn in the middle of the week, because um, for those of you who don't know, our legislative session in Illinois runs from mid-January to late May. So this week in early May is really a great opportunity specifically in our state to learn about what legislation is pending around food scraps, composting organics, and whether there are opportunities for people who may be interested to help move some legislation across the finish line. Now is literally the time to potentially do that. So we're really excited for that all of you are here to learn more about that. Um, and thank you again for joining us. Um, so I will lump, jump into the legislative lunch and learn. Um, um, all in now. So um, on behalf of IEC, the Illinois Environmental Council, um, what IEC does is we are a, um, a state level uh, nonprofit that has worked since 1975 to safeguard basically everything in Illinois, the people, the plants, the animals, and the natural systems on which we all depend. We represent more than 150 uh, environmental organizations operating in Illinois. Many of those are based in Illinois. Some of them are national with an Illinois presence. Um, and it's integral to IEC's work to ad advance policies that are equitable in nature. nature uh, they will not, we will not advance a policy that's not equitable in nature. Um, and those policies need to create healthy environments through collaboration, building power, and advocacy across our issue areas of conservation, sustainable agriculture, clean energy and water, transportation, and my personal favorite, zero waste. Next slide. Um, so this slide, what, um, what, what I wanted, what we're doing um, for this presentation today is I'm going to introduce um, a number of bills that have been related in the zero waste space, but specifically in the food scrap, organics, and composting space. Um, and then my co-presenters are going to do a deeper dive into some of those bills. Liz Rupel is going to talk more about bills that um, kind, of, kind of intersect some synergies with them in the soil health um, and agriculture space. And then uh, Kiara is going to do a deeper dive into uh, one of the bills on this uh, slide, the Good Food Purchasing Policy Act, um, which we're really excited about. And again, is a really good example of, of a policy with, with a, um, an important equitable component to it. So the three bills on this slide are the three bills that are currently live, sort of pending uh, in the state of Illinois um, and could be moving forward. Um, uh, House Senate bill... Uh, Actually, I'm going to start at the bottom. House Resolution 320 would reduce food waste and insecurity, um, and it urges the state to adopt and develop policies uh, to address those issues in our state specifically. 
Um, that resolution is actually up for hearing this afternoon at two o'clock. Um, and after I'm done talking, I will add in uh, some witness slip links. I didn't uh, think about that in the, didn't put it together, um, but literally at two o'clock. So again, today's a great time. Um, if people want to, uh, if don't know about that resolution, want to learn more about it and or file a witness slip uh, in support of it. Um, uh, so and, and it would only need to be adopted within the House um, uh, to uh, to take to take effect. Um, so that's an exciting one. Um, and then, as I mentioned, um, uh, our co-presenter, Kiara, is going to do a deeper dive into the good food purchasing policy, which is House Bill 5052. So I will let her do that. And then the other bill that I'm going to talk a couple minutes about is Senate Bill 2876, which is which is um, the large event recycling and composting bill. Um, and this is actually a really important one uh, for a couple reasons. Um, one, uh, it was introduced last year as House Bill 1370 by our state representative Tarver. This year, and it passed the sorry, it passed the House last year and made it into the Senate, but didn't make it out of the Senate through the by the end of the session. This year in 2024, it was introduced in the Senate. It passed the Senate. Now it's back in the House with Representative Tarver as its chief sponsor again, which means it has a good chance of passing out of the House. Not a good chance. Sorry, it has a, a reasonable chance of passing out of the House. Um, and I qualified that because um, when this bill was introduced in 2023, it was only it only related to recycling facilities. The composting piece was added in through an amendment last spring. And so now that it's going back in the House, there are some concerns and questions about that composting piece specifically that have just been coming up in the last couple of weeks since the bill passed the Senate and moved into the House. Like I said, literally exactly why this is a good time to talk about this. So the concerns around the composting piece are that I think that the legislators, there's a general understandable general concern that there is not the infrastructure throughout the state to accommodate the kind of food scrap diversion that we're talking about, especially when you're talking about larger venues. The simple answer is that's a non-issue because all of the counties and locations and areas where the venues and where there would be a requirement to recycle or compost uh, would be in effect, those facilities exist, that infrastructure exists. So um, it, it is just a non-issue. There may be another um, amendment to kind of clarify that, but it wouldn't change anything. Um, it just, again, it's, and it's, that, it's the kind of thing where it's great for, again, those people who, like us, potentially on the advocacy side who support these kinds of initiatives to call our representatives to file witness slips when appropriate, to go to lobby days, which we'll talk about in a minute, and really let your representative and senators know that you support these bills. If they have questions, you have resources, you know, people can answer their questions and concerns about them. Um, and the whole reason Representative Tarver introduced this bill in the first place in 2023 was because he personally was disgusted by the amount of waste he saw at our sporting venues. I don't want to name names. I don't even know what stadium he was in, but it was, you know, a large, it would not mean it was like football basketball, it was a professional sporting thing. I just literally don't know at which venue it was. But that's what it's all about is 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 you know capturing that large venue waste where we know it there's really going to have it's really going to have an impact. So those are the three bills, uh, one of which obviously is a resolution that are currently moving and again a great opportunity to call and express support for Senate Bill 2876 uh, right now and in the next couple of weeks. Next slide, please. And then this slide quickly shows the other bills that related relate to food scraps, organics, and composting that were introduced this year or last year and that are not currently moving forward, but may be reintroduced next year, um, 2025. Um, and it just represents sort of um, a, a representative of the, kite, the, the types of bills, the range of bills that are being introduced. And I'll actually qualify that also. They're representative of the range, but I would say this year there was definitely a, a lesser number, a fewer fewer bills were introduced really across um, uh, environmental issues across the board, largely because this is such a strange uh, year for the state legislator, legis legislature given the general election. So many fewer bills were introduced in general because um, our legislators knew that they were just going to be busy <laughs> with other items. And so there was just, honestly, there's, you know, there were probably half as many bills introduced in the composting space this year as last year. 
just as an example. So again, this is just a, 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 a sampling and it gets from everything to, you know, upstream solutions of donating food or requiring diversion or source separation to downstream solutions, um, including better management of, a methane, of, of emission methane, sorry, methane emissions from landfill, either minimizing them and or capturing them and, and using them in a beneficial manner. Um, next slide, please. Um, and then real quick, I wanted to talk about uh, the path of a, a Compost Awareness Week resolution that we've had in Illinois. Um, this is, a, again, a great example of turning ideas into action. I learned about a, a resolution in California back in 2021 to designate the week of International Compost Awareness Week um, as Compost Awareness Week in the state. And I asked uh, my representative, uh, who happens to be the amazing Senator Laura Fine um, and Robin Gable, who's the actual representative. But if I asked Laura Fine if she might be able to, if we might be able to do a similar resolution in Illinois, and, and we did, and this timeline sort of tracks that. Um, and it's exciting and fun to watch, I think. So we introduced a resolution first. It was very late, but I was excited to have it introduced at all. The next year, we introduced a resolution and a bill that would designate the entire week permanently, so we wouldn't have to reintroduce it every year and ask, like re-ask each year. Um, and then last year, those bills were some of the first that Senator Fine introduced, which was also really exciting. Um, and then this year, again, ironically, because it was a very a very busy year, um, and given my newer role in IEC, I just I actually joined a year ago today. Sorry, today's my one year anniversary, May 8th with IEC, sorry. Um, but so we were asking, I was asking Laura Fine to, to we were asking her to sponsor and, and be involved with drafting and sponsoring other bills. And so I actually specifically didn't want her or didn't ask, I didn't wanna like impose on her and ask her to do a resolution that it just felt like too much for this year. But um, next year we will totally try again when I feel like there's more bandwidth for it um, in general. So, um, that's been the path of our Compost Awareness Week resolution and bill so far, but it's not done yet. All right, next slide. And now I'm gonna pitch it to Liz Rupel, who's gonna share her story of her bills, um, bills in the soil health space and the soil health resolution and bill that she's been advocating for and moving forward. Thank oh, you so, so much. I'm gonna, Liz. I apologize. I'm gonna pitch it to Jenny though. I, I skipped it. I'll pitch it to Jenny to introduce Liz. Sorry about that. All good, thanks. You're muted, Jenny. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Liz Kunkel. That was excellent. And I love it. Keep keep up the good work. You and all of your hats are wonderful. Um, I would, I'm happy to introduce next um, Liz Rupel. She is the lead organizer for the Illinois Stewardship Alliance. Since joining the team in 2018, Liz has put her community organizing skills to work by launching the Alliance's Soil Health Farmer-Led Caucus, where she engages with members to create change in our local food and farm systems, like declaring the first ever Soil Health Week in Illinois. Woohoo! She graduated from the University of Illinois Springfield with a bachelor's and master's degree in environmental studies with a focus of policy and sustainable development. Well, uh, welcome, Liz. Um, go ahead. We'd love to hear your presentation. Thank you, Jenny, and shout out to Liz. Great job. Yes, I am a lead organizer at the Illinois Stewardship Alliance. I've been on the team for six years, and it's been a super fun ride. Um, we are a farmer-led, eater-powered alliance, and we use our choices and voices to shape a more just and regenerative food system. We're also celebrating our 50th year this year. We were founded in 1974, and we're going to have a lot of birthday fun this year, so keep your eyes peeled. Um, but Jenny mentioned the Soil Health Caucus that we run, so that's kind of how we um, operate at the alliance. We really want to be as farmer led as possible. So we organize our farmers into three caucuses, soil health caucus, a local food caucus and livestock caucus. Um, each of these caucuses are run by farmers. So I get to hang out with Derek Irvin and the soil health caucus um, who runs Glacier's End in Southern Illinois. We also have two other amazing leaders, Christine Johnson from Wild Trillium Farm in Richmond and Morgan Sneddon of Fox at the Fork in Moni, if you wanted to check out some great local farms. 
And thank you to my boss for dropping in our link to the website. Um, the next slide, please. So Liz kind of gave an overview of uh, the resolution that was introduced for composting. Um, we kind of followed the same trajectory, which is really fun. Um, as they were introducing compost, we were also trying to work on a soil health resolution. 2021, we were successful in doing that. Our caucus, our farmer-led caucus drafted uh, the resolution. And for the past few years, we've been celebrating a soil health week. Last year, along with IFSCC, we also tried to make things permanent by introducing a bill, but the legislators just weren't having any kind of date, anything to do with any date bills. Um, they wanted to keep things at the resolution level. So this year we went ahead and introduced another Soil Health Week resolution and it was adopted. Um, if you can skip to the next slide, we try to keep things compatible, um, going along the same path with uh, the Soil Health Week. So we host a series of events, just like uh, this week of celebration for compost um, in March. It's the first full week of March. So we host our, our Soil Health Week and we've been doing that for a few years. This was the second year that we hosted a lobby day to go along with that. Um, it's just a, a fun time to get together and to just spread awareness of all things soil health, compost being a part of that. Um, this year we saw 20 partners coming together, hosting 27 different um, in-person and virtual events with a lot of different topics as far as carbon capture, um, the mouthful of a word of the nutrient loss reduction strategy, farmer mental health, and, and compost. If you go to the next slide, um, thanks to Amy Bartucci, uh, she really kicked this event. She held down the fort, ho helped host the, this event, um, spotlighting the power of compost. Uh, she, um, along with her work at IFSCC, she has a bunch of other hats. She's a super active member at the Alliance. She's a Soil Health Caucus member and a board member but she worked with the team to spotlight this decentralized composting process. Uh, so I know that she worked with Tegan Compost Service and Fremont Township Highway Commissioners uh, to really go through uh, what this process looks like. So um, this is kind of a, a shout out. If maybe you wanted to host something like Amy did in the future, I'd love to talk to you about some of your ideas because um, I know Amy's not here to be the full advocate for compost at the Stewardship Alliance, but I will do it for her. And I'd love to talk to you more about how we can incorporate more of a compost um, strategy um, at the Stewardship Alliance. So don't hesitate to reach out to me. But as far as other bills go that we're kind of keeping our eye on, if you can head to the next slide, I just wanted to go over a couple things that are still happening uh, this year. Um, we just happened to be at the Capitol yesterday for Loyal to the Soil Day. So this was kind of a fun continuation of our Soil Health Lobby Day back in March to keep some of the issues we were advocating for relevant and top of mind for legislators. So one of the first initiatives, this is no longer active, but I still wanted to talk about it because it's active in a different way. So HB 5225 was the purpose was to stabilize soil and water conservation districts. And that may be a new term for some of you. So just to share what soil water conservation districts are or SWCDs for short, um, they were started back in the thirties. Um, FDR saw the impacts of the Dust Bowl and said, we need conservation in place. We need folks boots on the ground to help farmers to ensure that our topsoil isn't landing on his desk in Washington, DC from out west. So uh, SWCDs have been around for a long time, uh, providing technical assistance and doing a lot of education for um, various districts throughout Illinois. We have 102 total districts here in Illinois and they have 97 operating soil and water conservation districts. So a lot of farmers and others are getting support from these folks. So they're really important. And every year, it seems, um, their importance isn't recognized because their funding is on the chopping block every year. Uh, so this year in particular, the governor's proposed budget cut their funding nearly in half. So the proposed budget isn't any, we don't have to always uh, think that that is, you know, uh, rubber stamp of approval. There's some things we can still do to change it, but 
right now they're looking at four point million dollars down from nearly nine. So we have to advocate for our SWCDs a lot. Thousands of farmers are relying on them um, to provide that technical assistance. And they also do a lot of education throughout the districts that they're in with uh, various ages or, or farmers. And a lot of that has to do with compost. So SWCDs could be educating school kids or they could be helping someone get what's called a regional conservation partnership program for compost. So they're super important. and. Since this bill isn't active anymore, this has basically just become an appropriations act. And right now is May, and they're looking at the budget um, as we speak, um, making some of those decisions. So right now is the best time to ask our legislators to fully fund soil and water conservation districts. Um, they really want to see their funding at $10.5 million. And that's going to help ensure that their staff stays in place and they don't continue to lose institutional knowledge. And our next uh, priority, which is my last slide, is the Fall Covers for Sharing Savings Program. Uh, we want to reward farmers for planting cover crops. So this has a House and a Senate bill. And what we're really trying to do with this is increase funding so we can cover 500,000 acres. Uh, this is a super popular, underfunded, overprescribed program and we, um, it's, you can snap your fingers and farmers are applying for this and the funding is running out. And there's enough interest, we think, if we boosted the funding to cover 500,000 acres and cover crops to ensure that more farmers can access this program. Cover crops are awesome. You know, they're really great, for, like a natural compost in the soil uh, for farmers. And we'd love to see more acres in Illinois covered in cover crops, because it's not only beneficial for the soil, but it's beneficial for erosion and our waterways. So I'm gonna drop another link in the chat um, to if you wanted to take some action for the Fall Covers for Shrink Savings Program. And I think that's all the time I have. If you all did have any questions, I'm happy to answer them in the chat. Super. Thank you so much, Liz. Excellent. More important work. Um, yeah, we definitely want to have some more compost soil connections. We are intertwined. I am excited to introduce our next uh, final, but not um, by no means diminished speaker, Kiera Jackson joined the Alliance. Uh, I'm sorry, let me make sure I'm saying the correct alliance, the Illinois Food Justice Alliance. Um, Kiera Jackson joined the Alliance in May 2023 after working across sectors in education, nonprofit, and government. She is a California native who moved to Chicago for graduate school and decided, decided to stay and plant roots. For some crazy reason, I guess she likes cold. As the director of the Illinois Food Justice Alliance, IFJA, Kiera will work with the IFJA coalition, a multi-sector and multi-racial coalition to pass the good food purchasing program at the state level and other policies to improve the Illinois food and farm systems. Kiera is new to the agricultural space and looks forward to building power and organizing and supporting stakeholders for the hope of a better tomorrow. Kiera graduated from the University of Chicago, California, Santa Barbara with a master's in sociology uh, with a bachelor's in sociology and a master's in public policy from the University of Chicago Harris School of Public Policy. In her spare time, she is catching up with her family in California, reading or watching her favorite TV shows. Take it away, Kiera. Thanks, Jenny, for that beautiful intro. Um, as Jenny mentioned, my name is Kiera Jackson. I'm heading up the Illinois Food Justice Alliance, also known as IFJA. Um, we're a statewide coalition focused on food justice policy at the state level. And one of the first things that we're trying to do is spearhead a good food purchasing program campaign to pass GFPP on the state level. And so in this slide, on the left side, there's more information about IFJA. Then on the right side, there's information about GFPP. And I'll speak about its importance at a high level. Um, so the Good Food Purchasing Program leverages the power of institutional purchasing to transform food systems and address systemic inequities. Um, but nearly 75% of Illinois covered in farmland, less than 3% of food consumed in Illinois comes from local farms. The state can leverage their purchasing dollars to invest in local producers and help transition the state to become a more diverse and resilient agriculture. The proactive use of public 
uh, food procurement dollars is a central step in ensuring higher wages for workers in the food service industry, which is the state's largest employer and more nutritious, higher quality food for the state's most food insecure. Um, also, locally driven food production and supply chains increase investments in local economies and improve the health of community members by giving them access to fresh produce as opposed to processed foods. And so all in all, this framework also supports opportunities for local farmers and food businesses with an emphasis on supporting operations that are owned by Black, Indigenous, and people of color. Um, and then just to reiterate that uh, GFPP is a comprehensive framework that prioritizes local economies, environmental sustainability, workforce, workforce rights, animal welfare, and nutrition. Next slide, please. Um, and then this slide is regarding the bill. So right now we have a bill in session, the Good Food Purchasing Law, HB 5052. And here I'll discuss some of the key components of this bill, and then I'll get into um, the importance and what it could look like, what the impact could look like for this bill to be passed at the state level. And so some of the key components of the bill are baseline assessment, so making sure that institutions are assessing their current food purchasing practices, and then using those baseline assessments to create multi-year plans so that their uh, future and then current food purchasing practices will be more in alignment with GFPP standards, um, doing some transparent reporting. So making sure that we're holding them accountable um, to their food practice, their food purchasing practices being in alignment with GFPP standards. Um, and then also making sure that their contracts are being awarded um, based on RFP and not the lowest bidder requirement. Um, and then having the good, good food purchasing task force be an oversight mechanism for implementation at the state level. Um, and so to get into some of the impacts that we could see with this being passed on the state level would be that for advocating for the adoption of this, we aim to create undeniable ripple effects that steer our entire food system to reflect those five core values that I mentioned earlier. And so purchasing and procurement play a fantastic and crucial role in shaping our food system when public institutions such as schools or hospitals and even government agencies like ISBE or the Department of Corrections adopt policies like GFPP, they commit to sourcing food that aligns with values such as supporting local economies, promoting sustainability and ensuring fair labor practices. And then this shift um, not only creates healthier and more ethical food options, but also serves as a powerful tool for leveraging equity, transparency, and accountability across the entire food supply chain. Um, and by advocating for stronger policies around procurement and purchasing, we can influence not only the quality of food that we consume, but also the, the way that it's purchased, sourced, produced, and distributed. And then this in turn, we hope will have far reaching impacts on community health, um, the economy, and also the environment. Next slide, please. And now I'll get into some of um, the most recent updates that we have around HB 5052. So as I mentioned, um, the bill is in session, it was introduced, um, but during this time, we've also made some additional amendments. So now we are on amendment 002 for HB 5052. Um, and so some of those amendments look like um, amending the procurement code to make sure that state agencies procuring food are exempt from the lowest bidder requirement um, with a lot of um, emphasis around the general service titles and then the higher education titles. And then also making sure that um, we remove the fund um, from the introduced bill. So essentially saying that um, having the bill be in accordance with the governor's office policy of removing private funding and then also removing the Center for Good Food Purchasing as someone who would handle the assessments um, to make sure that we are avoiding sole source bidding is issues and then increasing the animal welfare language to make sure that it is in alignment with other recognized animal welfare standards. Um, and so the progress on this and where we are currently with the bill is that the bill has been signed to the Rules Committee and the Illinois Food Justice Alliance is working closely with the lead sponsor, Representative Sonia Harper, to build support and advance its passage in the veto session of this year. Um, and then with all of that, please we wanna look out for our website launch. IFSHA is 
launching a website in the next couple of weeks. We're really excited about it. It will be some exciting things on there. And it will also include ways in which that individuals and also organizations can engage and support HB 5052 and also the Illinois Food Justice Alliance. Well, that was incredible. I am just thrilled to hear that, especially um, with the 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 no uh, minimum bidder, the the lowest bidder. That I know at our school is really. I'm glad to see that on the on the chopping block. <laughs> um, so. Um, thank you to all of our presenters. This information has been incredible. As you see, food is not trash. There's so much more we can do with it. It is a valuable resource. We should compost it. We should feed animals, feed soil, feed people, and especially people who are hungry. Liz, do we have some questions um, in our chat for our, our wonderful experts? I think, okay, first of all, I'm off mute. Okay. Um, I, we have a couple, right, yeah. again, I apologize. I started, I uh, sort of put that ask out there for questions out a little late, but I also, I want to, I want to pause for a minute. I was actually, I was, even though I saw Kiara's slides, I was just blown away by the story of that bill and what it's trying to accomplish. Um, and, and what I really, this, this kind of happened fortuitously in this presentation, but, um, but I, it's one of those things I think happened for a reason, which is that our presentations kind of came out in this order of importance, if you will, like my discussion of sort of general composting is just sort of like, let's not put it in landfill and there's, let's not put food scraps in landfill. And, and, and there's all of these ways to avoid doing that. And composting is, you know, such a beneficial use of food scraps and organics. But even better than using them for compost is using them directly to feed our soil, feed our animals, feed our neighbors, <laughs> feed our friends, um, you know, feed the people who need it and make sure the food stays as food as its highest value and not and, and it isn't it isn't, you know, considered waste. We really want to try to change that viewpoint. It's not a waste. It's a resource and a material that we can use and reuse and donate the same way we can use other materials. We just have to manage it differently because it's perishable, but it's still, you know, the processes are still there. So that's what this is all about is figuring out how to do that. So I was really thrilled with how this sort of played out with that moving up because ending with Kiara's presentation on keeping food for food and for people is is the right way to end the you know the discussion that's the best way to do it and that's what we want to hope you know move our legislators to thinking about you know avoid the waste in the first place whatever's left let's compost it but let's avoid the waste in the first place so um thank you again for everybody and Liz R and Kiara for for like helping to fill out this amazing presentation um so i think um, I think the first question, I will go back and double check, but um, Jennifer Hurd had a question for Liz R about how the conservation districts are currently funded. Yeah, um, so through that, um, there's this pot of money called the Partners for Conservation Fund, which uh, goes to the Department of Natural Resources and a couple other entities. Um, and all of that funding that gets put into the Partners for Conservation Fund, some of it trickles into the Department of Agriculture, which then that helps to fund the Fall Coverage for Spring Savings Program. And um, a little bit of this also goes to the Association of Soil Water Conservation Districts. So all 97 districts are kind of represented by the association who then helps to make sure that um, funding is allocated to each district. Thanks for that, Liz. And I am dropping into the chat one other thing. Okay. So um, the other the other links I just dropped in the chat. So in, in another kind of uh, a nice, um, I don't know, twist of fate, karma, if you will, you know, Liz talked about how, Liz R talked about how um, her soil health resolution and bill have, have she's, she's combined that more with uh, the soil health week. 
um, at the beginning of March and, and incorporated her the lobby day as part of that. That was actually my first lobby day uh, participating in any way. Um, but in this, but at this time, ironically, again, it was, it was uh, as a leader, <laughs> which I, I'll be honest, I was less equipped to do, um, not having participated in one before. Um, but, but now I'm, it, they're, it, they're great. And so it was really cool to participate. Um, and, and now again, uh, we, uh, conservation lobby day was last week. Again, other overlap with actually the conservation, the soil and water conservation districts were on you know, on the agenda for last week's conservation lobby day, some of the some of the bills on the black farmers and growers lobby day uh, were on that conservation list last week. Um, and so that's what I want to go to next. You know, again, this interesting um, uh, coincidence um, fortuitousness, I think, is that next Wednesday, May 15th, is both um, uh, the fourth and last uh, uh, for IEC of the series of lobby day that lobby days that it's doing this legislative session. Our third one is tomorrow, climate action. Um, if people want to go, we have buses going from all over the state. There are going to be 400 people convening at the Capitol to lobby around clean energy, clean transportation, and climate action. Yep, 400 people. So super exciting. Um, I'll be there for that. Um, and then next week, we look forward to our much smaller and more intimate Zero Waste Lobby Day, which uh, will be about 30 people. And we're super excited about that. Honestly, we've got great, great representation from grassroots organizations, um, uh, other national organizations, again, state organizations. So I'm super excited. We're going to be lobbying around uh, the large event recycling and composting bill that I mentioned, as well as two bills that would reduce single use plastic, um, one bags and one uh, foam foodware polystyrene. Um, and so that's the the sum. Those are the range of our zero waste bills uh, for this year. Um, and then on the same day, um, IEC is working with Black far Farmers and Growers on their lobby day. And I'd love to flip it back over to Kiera to talk a little bit about the bills you guys are covering in that day, because we're super happy uh, to be aligned and again, co continuing to coordinate efforts and 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 create build the synergies and make those connections for the legislators around these issues as well. Perfect. Thank you, Liz. Um, I'm pulling up the, give me like two seconds. I'm pulling up the Make it. I didn't really tell you of... I was going to do that. I just put you on the spot. <laughs> do, 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 okay. do, do, do. Um, okay. So I'll touch upon um, some of the bills um, that we will be advocating for. So one of them would be HB 5052, so the Good Food Purchasing Law. Um, some of the other ones will be the Socially Disadvantaged Farmers Grant, HB 2523, um, Black Farmers Week, um, HR 0625, the Farmer Restoration Program Act, HB 56, um, the Local Food Infrastructure Grant Program, SB 3077, the Distressed Farmers Act, HB 50, sorry, HB 4857, and then the DNR Prairie Lawns, HB 5433. And so we have a, a very wide and expansive amount of different um, bills that we'll be advocating for and also resolutions. I mean, we're really excited about the day. Um, so on May 15th, as Liz uh, Kay mentioned, um, we'll be having it on Wednesday and it's starting really early at 8 a.m. We'll have a breakfast. Um, have some speakers um, and then have some me a meet and greet um, with different House and Senate Ag Committee members in the Black Caucus. And then also from 9.45 to 10.20, um, we'll have time to for people to ask questions before we kick off the lobbying portion of the day. And then at 10.30, we'll have a press conference and a group photo. Um, and then at 11.30 to 1 p.m., that's when we'll start meeting with the different legislators and leadership, and that's when the lobbying will begin. And then at 1, we'll debrief and have a lunch. That's awesome, Kier. I'm, I'm, I'm actually sad I can't go to it. <laughs> there's <laughs> it's there's too many good things going on, but I know I will cross paths I know. With that day. Um, well, uh, well. We'll say hi. I'm pre. I'm like certain we'll probably like bump into each other. Exactly. So we'll definitely we'll find, we'll find um, each other. Hi. 
Yeah. Exactly. And we'll update exactly. each other on what's happening with our lovely days. Exactly. So again, just for everyone, again, for those of you who might be more interested in the policy piece or kind of want to see how this works in action in, in, in the Capitol, it's really, it's really exciting. Um, it's fun to watch and see it. Um, it's kind of like a trade show, except all the people you're tabling are moving targets. It's really great. It's really, really funny. Um, it's our, it's, 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 it's our, you know, our politics in action. It's fascinating. Um, so anyway, and if you can't do it this year, then think about it maybe for next year, just plan ahead a little bit. I, again, you know, it's, it's, there's, it's, it's really, it's fascinating. Um, okay. Sorry. we got um, another we did get one more. Uh, yeah. We did get one more question in the chat here. Um, exactly. from this says, is anyone aware if the EPA is applying any pressure on the MWRD or other sanitation facilities for improving the status of compost grade biosolids or where that issue currently stands scientifically? It's a huge soil resource. Um, I don't know if that's a Benjamin question, if he's on and able, or um, I unfortunately do not carry that knowledge. Um, Liz, Liz, or Kiera, any, me at Merlan, is this a, uh, anyone? I don't, I don't, I know that there are, there are conversations, obviously, um, around um, ensuring that um, biosolids are safe and, um, uh, you know, uh, 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 I mean, don't have, aren't contaminated, um, don't have PFAS in them, but also making sure, like I know the U.S. Composting Council logo on this um, on this slide, you know, is working to make sure that facilities that receive compost with PFAS potentially are not liable, that kind of things. Um, so, and luckily we have Teresa Johnston from the MWRD, who is in a better position to answer than I am. So thanks, Teresa. Go ahead. We might need to give her permission to unmute. Let me oh. see. Let's can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Um, thank you. I don't have any specific updates right now. Let's turn my video on. Sorry. Uh, but the EPA is working with us. They um, still emphasize that land application biosolids is the number one way to utilize biosolids. It is better for the climate and environment and soil health than incinerating or um, landfilling. So it's similar to the food scrap situation, right? Where we have organic matter, we have nutrients. If we can get those recycled, it's optimal rather than having them um, become problematic. As far as um, improving the status of compost grade biosolids, uh, they already have the part 503 requirements, which have um, they've gone through a very rigorous risk assessment and looked at hundreds of different contaminants that could potentially be in biosolids. They looked at the ones that are potentially harmful to human or environmental health. And when those intersect, so you have both presence at amounts that there could be exposure as well as risk to environment or health. They did a very thorough risk assessment on each chemical to make sure that they had limits set. And that is the guidelines that were required to follow in order to um, provide exceptional quality compost with biosolids. As far as updates with um, PFAS, it's a, a waiting game right now from the EPA. So it's something that we're working together with them on, waiting for feedback and um, as of right now, the science still supports use for um, biosolids and composted biosolids for land application. So, thank you. Thanks so much for Super. jumping thank in you. on that one, Teresa. Really appreciate your expertise. Thank you. And thanks for that great question, Nicholas. Really appreciate that. Excellent. <laughs> Um, well, Liz, I'm not seeing any other questions in the chat. Um, no. We do have to take one more minute to plug the rest of all of our great events that are coming up. Tomorrow night, we have the Compost Cafe, which you can see in person in Vernon Hills. You can go live and attend. A couple of our libraries are hosting in-person viewing, um, or you can register online. We're going to have music, poetry, 
um, songs. It's just going to be an incredible night of just celebration and enjoying compost in, in a new way and um, even a poet scientist. So I don't think you're going to want to miss that. Saturday, we have all of our adventures in composting happening. Again, we are in five counties this year, upstate, downstate, east state, west state. Um, so please check out the um, website. I, I'm, I'm assuming we have it all over the place, um, uh, illinoiscompost.org backslash ICAW 2024. We have all of our drop downs. Um, here are just a few pictures of things that have already happened this week. Um, these are some of our adventures in composting from May 5th. I see we have, let's see, Nature's Climate Champion. Where was this one? In North Chicago at a garden open house and one of the give backs for the Growing Healthy Veterans and Eden Restoration. There's a really great picture of our compost at, uh, that you can find at our giveaways. Um, Liz, am I missing anything? I don't think so. I mean, I, th again, just please thank you everyone for attending, but uh, you know, there, there are still plenty of events left. As Jenny said, there's Compost Cafe virtually tomorrow, uh, a full day of hands-on interactive um, events on Saturday. And Merlan dropped in the chat that uh, Teresa is part of those um, hands-on events on Saturday. She's not just a scientist. Uh, and an MWRD employee, she's an active ICA member and is hosting at a compost and cocktails event um, this Saturday at Black Cherry Farms, which includes kitty cocktails for little kids. So um, again, lots of different opportunities um, to, to participate and learn more about composting um, the rest of the week and especially Saturday. Um, uh, but again, thank you for joining us for this legislative lunch and learn and, and learning a little bit more about um, the the food scrap uh, donation and good food purchasing and soil health policies that are you know up for consideration and and uh, potentially in need of your support this year. So thanks very much for uh, for joining us today. Um, and again for for all of your support for IFSCC uh, and and ISA and IFJA. Um, and we appreciate you coming today on this beautiful day. And now go outside and enjoy it. Super. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.